Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving. Sorry about that. I'm, I appear to be having technical difficulties. Um, but anyway, what I was saying, I hope everyone's had a great day. Um, if you had to work, hopefully you've had time, or maybe you'll have time tomorrow to get with your family, um, to have a, a just a good time fellowshipping with one another and just loving on one another and having a, just a good time together. Um, I want to read some scripture before I get started. This is in Isaiah. Um, Isaiah chapter 43 starting with verse 1, and it says, But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. And this is God talking. It says, You are mine, and the mine is capital M. Um, it goes on to say, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame scorch you. Uh, so that's a promise right there of God. I know he's talking to Israel. But, you know, Israel rejected Jesus as Savior. Or Savior and I've heard uh, a minister say one time several years ago that if you want to think about it, we are God's adopted Israel. Um, the Israelites rejected him, so he was brought to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles received him. And thank God for that. Um, so, if you know, even though he's talking to Israel here... You could also put us in this place. Um, but he's saying, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. And then he goes on to say that, you know, whether you pass through the waters or the rivers or you have to walk through the fire, uh, he'll be with you. The rivers will not overflow you and the fire will not burn you. And that's a promise right there that he's given us in his word. Um, his word is full of promises for us. Promises that he will protect us, that he will keep us, that he will be with us. You know, and um, there's times when it does feel like we're going through a fire um, or maybe we're going through a river and, and we feel like we're in over our heads and we're not going to make it across. You know, but his word right there tells us we will make it with his help. As long as we stay in his will and stay where he wants us to be and let him lead us, then we're going to be okay. And that's a great promise to know because there's so many times the things that we face um, seem so impossible sometimes to get past and seems like that uh, we're never going to make it out of the valley that we're walking in but, you know he's promised us over and over and over again that he will be with us and that he will give us the strength that we need and uh you know that we'll come out on the other side victorious you know when um Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace <clears throat> you know um because they refused to bow to Baal and they threw them in, and, and the king was so incensed and enraged with anger against them that he had them heat the furnace seven times hotter than what it normally was. And he tied them up, or he had them tied up, and had them thrown in. And the Bible says the fire was so hot that the men that threw them in, it killed them. Now, I always wondered, they should have known right there something was up if the men that threw the, threw the three Hebrew children were killed when they threw them in there, but the three Hebrew children were not killed. They were able to throw them in there. Um... But the Bible goes on to say that the king looked into the fire and he's like, didn't we throw three men in the fire? And they said, yes, O king. And he said, well, I see four men. And he said, the fourth looks like the son of God. And not only were they in the fire, they were walking in the fire. The ropes had come in, in, away from their arms. You know, they had burned off. But they weren't burned. They were in the fire, but not consumed by the fire. <clears throat> and so he had them brought out. And it says that their clothes were not burned. They were not burned nor was the smell of smoke on them. So that lets you know right there that if, if we're in the center of God's will, even if we're walking through the fire, and even if, you know, um, we seem to be right in the middle of the awfulest situation in our life, that we're going to come out of it victorious, and we're going to come out of it not even smelling like whatever mess we've been through because they came out of the fire not even smelling like smoke. So it lets me know right there that whatever we walk through, it might change us, um, more into what God wants us to be. We might be different when we come out on the other side of it, but it's going to be different in a good way, not in a bad way. So take heart and know that even if you're walking through the hardest trial of your life and it feels like, you know, you're walking through fire or you're trying to wade across the river that's over your head, that uh, just keep on chugging on and keep on walking and, and don't stop. Um, get that direction in your mind. Get God's direction in your mind. Let him direct you and lead you in the right way. And uh, he'll bring you through victoriously on the other side. He will. He's, he he said he would. He promised he would. He does not lie. He does not go back on his word. 
So just know that he's with you every step of the way. And there's times that, uh, you know, we might not feel him, but he's there because he said he'd never leave us. Now, we walk away from him, but he never walks away from us. You know, and, and there are times, I believe, with all my heart that he carries us because we cannot sometimes make it on our own. You know, there's times that I can't even pray for myself because I don't even know what to pray. I'm to the point that I can't even pray for myself. But that's when I know there are people praying for me because I feel it. Um, so that's why it's always so important to ask people for prayer. You know, people that you trust, people that you know is going to pray for you, uh, that's really going to touch God for you. Because there's sometimes when you don't know what to pray for yourself. You've prayed and prayed till you're prayed out. You're out of words. Uh, all you can do is just, sometimes all I can do is just cry. I can't even form words anymore. But I know people are praying for me. And that helps me and gives me the strength to, to just keep on trying to put one foot in front of the other. Um, and it's hard sometimes. I know it gets hard. Especially, um, I know some circumstances that y'all go through are a lot harder than what I've ever been through. Um, but just know that God is for you. And he's with you. And, and read that in Isaiah again. And uh, commit it to your memory. If you have to, write it down. I've I've taken scriptures before that's really spoken to my heart. <clears throat> and I've written them down like on an index card. And taped them up through the house. Like on a mirror. Uh, on the refrigerator. Over the phone. If you have, a lot of people don't have phones in their homes anymore. But used to, you know, we had a phone on the wall. Um, anywhere that you're going to see it on a regular basis. And every time you see it, read it. And it'll get in your heart, it'll get in your mind, and you can stand on it, and it's going to grow in you. Um, God's word does not return void. If he says it, it will bring forth fruit. Um, if you'll just stick with him <clears throat> and follow the path he's laid out before you. So let's pray together right quick. Uh, that way I can let you get back to your families if you're still visiting. We haven't been home very long. We've been at my mom, my mom and dad's all day. Um, my brother and his family were in from Mississippi, so we got to see them. Um, I had no intention of going to Walmart tonight, none whatsoever, and my brother and sister-in-law kind of uh, convinced me and Robert to go, and uh, Robert wasn't in there very long, he's like, I'm going outside, I can't handle this, so it did take a while, but uh, I still had my joy, even in the middle of all the chaos that was in Walmart, I still had fun, so I'm thankful for that, God is so good to us, so let's just pray together right quick, okay? God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the day that we've had with our family, for your protection and your love. I ask, oh God, that you be with those right now that are facing difficulties, that are facing what feels like a fire or what feels like water that they're trying to walk through. <clears throat> and it seems so impossible to them that they think they're never going to make it to the other side. But God, your word tells us that even when we walk through the water, when we walk through the river, oh God, that we will make it. We won't drown, oh God. And when we walk through the fire, we shall not be burned because you're there with us every step of the way. And I pray that you would just help folks that are struggling, oh God, to just feel that encouragement build up inside of them, oh God, to feel your love and to know that you're fighting for them, you're walking with them, and at times you're carrying them, and to know that they need to reach out to others that they can trust to have them to pray for them as well. God, just help them to be able to lay down tonight, to rest, to sleep peacefully, to have sweet dreams, and to know that you're taking uh, care of everything and that you've got everything under control. I thank you, God, for answers. I thank you for blessings. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for life in general. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So just know um, God is for you. He's not against you. Um, he's with you every step of the way. And even when you feel like you're walking through the fire and it's getting hot and you feel like you're not going to make it, you will make it because God is with you. Um, like I said, he, he was there with the three Hebrew children. He's not a respecter of persons. He was there for Daniel in the lion's den. Um, he's done so many miraculous things. You know, Peter was in jail. He sent an angel to rescue Peter. The church had met at uh, Mark's house. I think it was Mark's mother's house, actually, um, <clears throat> to intercede for him. And God sent an angel. He dispatched an angel to the prison. And if you'll read that in the, in the New Testament, Peter was asleep. And he had guards chained on either side of him. And I don't know, I, I guess, I think they were asleep too. But I know the, the Bible says the angel hit Peter on the side and told him to wake up. And the stocks fell off, and the shackles fell off. Hey, Aunt Pat, happy Thanksgiving. And um, and the angel led him out of the prison and uh, led him outside to the, I guess, to the main street. And he went to Mark's mother's house where they were meeting to pray for him. And he knocked on the door, and the young girl came to the door. 
and she was so excited she didn't even let him in. She went back and told him that Peter was outside, and they're all thinking she's crazy. Yeah, they are praying for his release, and he gets released, and they don't believe when he shows up. But when he, they did realize it, um, you know, there was a great rejoicing. So even when it feels like you're surrounded by the enemy on every side, and you're chained up by, on the, by the enemy on every side, and you feel like you're going to drown, or you're going to uh, not going to make it. Know that God is with you. And he can dispatch angels just like he did for Peter in the prison. Um, Paul and Silas were in prison. They praised the Lord anyway. And God shook the prison and the chains fell off and they, they were loosed from their bonds. So know that if God did it for them, the Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Um, he can do it for us too. He'll do it again and again and again. And so just know that he's with you. He's fighting for you. He loves you. Um, if you don't have a home church, I encourage you to find one in your area that's close by. Find a good, honest, Bible-believing church that will stand with you, that you feel love and you feel um, a family. You know, a church should feel like a family. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still having a lot of issues. Uh, find, but find you a church that you can attend. Um, ask around. Ask people that you trust that you know go to church. You know, what church would you recommend? And like I've said before, if you live in the Wynn, um, Colt, Four City, Colwell area, uh, Widener, wherever you may live, Four City Church of God, we would love to see you there. We're down by the sports complex. We're just a bunch of people that love God. We love each other. We love people. Uh, we have a street ministry. Some of the people in our church have a street ministry. They do uh, one Saturday a month. They go out on the corner there at Broadway in Washington. They are by First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas. The big bank, they hand out tracts, they pray with people if they want prayer, hand out water. Uh, we love people, and we want to see people come to Jesus. But anyway, uh, just read that scripture again if you need to. Like I said, write it down on a piece of paper, on a, an index card. Any scripture that really ministers to you, if it really touches you, write it down. Put it up in your house, put it up in your car. Um, let it get in your spirit, because our spirit's going to feed on something. And we need to make sure our spirit's feeding on the right things. And not the wrong things. But I love y'all. Have a great night. Happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, still happy. Still rejoicing. Love y'all so much. And I uh, miss my family. Miss y'all that we didn't get to see today. We used to get together all the time. Every year faithfully. And uh, a lot of things have changed since me and Mom and Papa have gone on. But I know uh, they're waiting on the other side for us. And uh, they're cheering us on. I love you too, Aunt Pat. And uh, they're waiting for us to get there. And we're going to have a big family reunion one day that's unlike anything we've ever seen before. And it's going to be forever and ever and ever. So I love y'all. Uh, my McElroy side, too. I love y'all. I, uh, I don't have as much on that side. The Hall family, y'all know, is big family. Uh, McElroy, not, not as big, but I love y'all, too, just as much. So happy Thanksgiving. Um, have a good night's sleep. And I will see y'all tomorrow. I love y'all. Good night.